Hello, this is Pastor John Smith, and we are talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have a very, very special guest here on this broadcast. I would like to introduce you to my beautiful wife, Pastor Elizabeth Garcia Smith. Amen. Hello, House of Prayer family. It is such a blessing to be here alongside of Pastor John Smith tonight. We're excited to be recapping the power gifts. And so I pray that you're ready to receive. And uh, you want to pray? Yeah. Let's, let's go. Do. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us. We pray that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and the heart to perceive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I also pray, Lord, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Open up the eyes of our understanding that we might know you. I believe that you're going to speak to us tonight. And we welcome you. We welcome your presence and we welcome the anointing to walk in the grace that you provided for us as believers and as the New Testament church. So have your way. Be glorified and exalted in your son Jesus name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. And amen. 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 So uh, we are going to recap the power gifts. My wife is going to open up with Ephesians chapter four. and She's going to share a scripture with you. And we're going to talk about this over these last uh, over this last month or so, we've talked about words, uh, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, and the gift of special faith. These are the power gifts or what some call the hand of God. So we're talking about the demonstration gifts, and we're going to, we're going to get to a place to where we're going to communicate to you not only what's happening with these gifts, but how God wants to use you in these gifts to preach the gospel and minister the kingdom of God to the lost uh, uh, and, and help them to come to know Jesus in a greater way. So, Bay, you want to open up with the Ephesians 4? Sure, absolutely. You know, as we were discussing this and looking at these power gifts and just, uh, just reading these definitions, and I was just, we were just planning uh, what we were going to say tonight and teach tonight, I just really thought about the scripture, uh, Ephesians 4, 11, and I think that it's very important and critical to the body of Christ in the book of Ephesians, Paul is addressing this church, the Ephesian church, and in the chapter 4, the subtitle talks about the unity and the maturity in the body of Christ. And so I'm going to read it, and then I'm just going to talk about a little bit that really stood out to me. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 reads, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And I'll just reread. To equip his people, verse 12, for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. It is important. The question I pose to us tonight and even why are we doing this just putting it out there why are we teaching why are we as pastors taking the time to teach and equip the body of Christ because it's mandated from scripture so it, it is critical for us as pastors in our role to teach you to build you up to bring you into a place of maturity and unity in the body of Christ, it is, in, it is imperative that we grow and we become mature in Christ. And so this is one of the ways that pastors, evangelists, yeah. pro apostles, and prophets and teachers, that we teach the word of God and we equip you to do the work of the ministry. It is not just our responsibility. You guys have he heard this over and over from us if we pastor you to uh, do the works of the healing and, and being used in the gifts of miracle. It is the body of Christ's responsibility. So why are we doing this? Why are we here on a Wednesday night teaching on these gifts? Because we want you to be uh, mature. Yes. We want you to grow. We want yes. you to be, be built up. We want you to feel confident in, in being used of God. We want you to exercise these amazing gifts that God says are for the believer. These nine spiritual gifts that God says are for us. It is so important that you just don't become a believer that is stagnant and stuck right. and, and don't use what God wants to do in your life and use you to bring those into the kingdom to encourage the body. So he, Paul is literally, literally just giving instruction of the importance of the pastors and the 
five-fold ministry to equip. So this is why we're here. We're equipping the body so that you can grow and be mature in these gifts and that you will not just stay stagnant um, and not grow. That's it. And I think this, that's so awesome that you share that because I really feel like part of the equipping is this. Jesus, he modeled, he demonstrated the gift. He modeled what it looked like. And then he empowered his disciples to go out and minister the gifts so that they can grow and mature. And then as they grew and mature in operating the gifts, as they became the leaders of the New Testament church in the book of Acts, then we see them not only demonstrating the gifts, but then equipping and teaching others. So that's a part of our job is to demonstrate, because a lot of times I feel like when people come to church, they're like, well, the pastors are up there uh, prophesying or laying hands or this and that. Well, we're modeling to you what that looks like, but the, you know what your church is, is the grocery store, your neighborhood, your family, your community, your job, your school. It's for you to then take what we've demonstrated at the church and bring it outside the four walls to then minister it to your context. And also in the church, in the house of God. I know here at House of Prayer, we welcome the people to exercise right. uh, the gifts of the Spirit. We welcome them. We want them, not just the two of us and our, and our leaders here at House of Prayer, but that we want those that are listening, those from House of Prayer yeah. Church. Or you guys have been just tapping in. You know, I was talking to Pastor John about a week and a half ago, even last week before Sunday service, and I was saying, I want the people of God to begin to pray in tongues and yes. interpret the message of tongues and to be used. This is a safe place. So th what other place than with the body of Christ, the people that you love, your pastors that love you, that are not going to judge you, but to allow you a space that you're hearing from the pastor's mouth. There's a space here that you can exercise those gifts, that you don't have to be called a pastor or one of the five, you know, fold ministry to be used of in the gifts, that you have a safe place that you can step out and do it. And guess what? If you mess up, who hasn't messed up? I've messed up before. You know, it's all good. There is grace. You know what we'll do? We'll pull you to the side and we'll talk to you privately so that we can teach you yes. and train you, not talk down to you. No, we've all messed up. We've all unsure maybe of operating a gift or so in our life. And if you and if you have never, well praise God for you. That's awesome. But there is an there is just a space here, a safe space for you to operate, for you to speak out. You know, I know one of the biggest things, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's like when do I know it's God and all these things, but we're just saying like talk to us about it. This is why we're saying ask your questions. This is why we're saying um, we're teaching. We're taking the time to actually sit down and teach so that you can step forward and begin to operate in what God has given to you. Because I know if you are a believer, this is for you. Absolutely. I want to say to you, if you learn how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit consistently, proficiently, um, just those two things, effectively, mm -hmm. it will radically change your Christianity. Yeah. Because it is a flow of the person of the Holy Spirit through you to touch the people around you. So it's the gifts. The whole the, the First Corinthians says that he gives the gifts uh, as he wills. The Holy Spirit gives the gifts as he wills or basically in whatever context he deems the gifts necessary. We operate in those gifts. So he gives it to us to operate in and manifest his gifts to the Christian and the unbeliever. And he asks us to seek them. Yeah. To seek out for them, to pray for them, to ask for them. Yes. So that he gives them as he wills. Yes. yes, and he's gonna give them. I remember one of your first teachings, Pastor John, you mentioned what is the best gift? Just going back to weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Week the best one. we the best gift is the gift that is needed at the time. Yes. And so we but we have a responsibility to ask. I just thought about this as we were just talking. I know we're going to get into this teaching, but I literally thought about this. I believe the ways to consistently and effectively operate in the gift is to have intimacy with the Father. Yes. Intimacy with Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because when you have a relationship and you are intimate with the Father and you have conversation with Daddy God and Jesus and Jesus is having conversation with you. You guys are talking. You're hearing the, what are, what are you talking about talking, Pastor Liz? I'm talking about that you can talk to God 
and ask him a question and be silent and let him give you a response. Yes. I'm talking about intimacy. I'm talking about spending time with him. I'm talking about knowing the voice of God. When you know the voice of God, it is so much easier to operate in these gifts because when he can tell you, hey, I want to use you right here, then you know his voice. You're not questioning all the time. Is this God? Is this not God? Is it now? Do I wait? You just know the voice of the shepherd, and he speaks, and he comes upon you. And when you, when you, when you sense him, you feel the nudgings, the, you know, that nudging that you, in your spirit, man, that means go. Yeah. So there's so many ways, but I know yeah. in my life the reason why I operate um, consistently and effectively in the gifts of the Spirit is because I have intimacy with the Father. It's because I talk to him. It's because I know his voice. You know, just like anyone else's voice, you know the voice of the person you spend the most time with. It's oh, the same exact thing. Yeah. So let me ask you this question in, in alignment with that. What about people who say, well, I don't feel worthy to operate in the gifts of the Spirit? Are the gifts of the Spirit about a person feeling worthy, or are they grace gifts, something that God freely gives to you without any act of righteousness on your part? Absolutely. I mean, they are grace gifts. They are... <laughs> There are gifts that the Lord gives us. They are a gift, right? A gift within itself, the definition of a gift. It's, it's something that is given to you. It's a gift. It, you don't earn it. You can't purchase it. It is a gift. When someone gives you a birthday gift or an anniversary gift, they went out and purchased it. They spent their money. They took the time to look for it. They, um, you know, wanted to wrap it up beautiful for you. And they literally, all they did was give it to you. All you had to do to receive the gift is actually open your hands and take it from them. Yeah. It's the same thing. All you have to do is open your spirit man That's good. and receive it. Receive it by faith. We're yes. going to talk about the faith that's gifts good. here tonight. No, that's so perfect. there's a receiving. Yeah. You can't purchase it. You can't buy it. You get in trouble, just like the scripture says, when you try to buy something from the Holy Ghost. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Uh, not by good. The ability to yes. operate in no. spiritual gifts. We're not doing that. We're going to receive it from the Lord. Amen. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that and breaking that down. You already talked about uh, earnestly desiring the gifts of the Spirit. So let me give you a couple of scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 says this. Paul said that my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. What was he talking about? He was specifically talking about operating in the gifts of the Spirit. So he said, when I came to you, Corinthians, I did not come to you with just wise and persuasive words, but I came to you operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why? He tells us why in verse 5. So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. So why is it important for us to operate in the gifts of the Spirit? So that people's faith might rest on the power of God. Because the power of God is a manifestation of the reality that he exists. So when we talk about winning the loss, we need them to know that God is real. Because if they know God is real, then they have a basis to believe on him. It's not about just minimizing it to the persuasion through the word. And we believe in persuading people through the gospel, but that persuasion is supposed to be accompanied with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, or more specifically, with the gifts of the Holy Absolutely. Spirit. Absolutely, it's twofold. What good is it that you talk about something, talk about something, and preach about something, and preach about something, and try to persuade people about something, but there's no backing, there's no the second fold to see the actual come to pass. I believe that's one of the saddest parts about the church right now, that people have said, like, I want to see what's in this Bible. I want to see it. You preach it, you talk about it, you, every Sunday, where is it? Where, what church can I go to and see the operation of the gifts flowing? What church can I yeah. go to and receive a miracle. Where is it? I believe that people are waiting and dying. And I believe that when the church rises up, and when I say the church, I'm not just talking about the fivefold ministry. The church, capital C, that means you. That means you. Yeah, you right there sitting down, watching it from your room, from your living room. I'm talking about you. When you rise up, when you decide to say, you know what? I want to operate in these yes. gifts that God has said yes. they're from me. 
That's going to make the difference. It's all about what we're talking about. The harvest is here, is it's ready, ready. It's, it's now. now. Yeah. We're saying the returning of the Lord. Why are we doing this? Why are we taking the time? I'm telling you, I got other things to do. The importance, the, there's an urgency yes. about teaching about these gifts because miracles draw people to Jesus. It does. It, it Miracles draw people to Jesus. I'm telling you, this is about you literally getting the epiphany, poof, open eyes, scales removed, eyes being opened to say that God wants to use you, signs, wonders, and miracles. Not only that, he said, those who believe, yes. those who believe yes. shall walk in these things greater than I ever. So are you walking in these things? God desires it. Yes, we grow and we grow, right, and we learn about these things. But when are they going to manifest in my life? Let me ask you that question tonight. When are they going to manifest in your life, for me, in my life? You know, we had to come to a decision and saying, God, we're tired of just reading about it. Right. We want this to be in our life. They right. came a place where right. I had yes. to get with my, yes. I hear you. I hear the miracles. That is awesome. Thank you for the book of Acts. I thank you. But, Lord, you said in my lifetime. Yes. Through me. And so we just decided we're going after it. That's we're going to believe God. Yeah. And so it's, we're going to have examples here in a little bit. But right. there was just, God, I just really sensed by the Holy Spirit that God is saying, big church, right, big C, the church to rise up and to operate in this because it's for you. Yeah. It is for you. Don't think that you're not worthy enough. Don't think, who, who told you that lie? Who told you that lie? You never read in the Bible that you have to be worthy enough to receive a gift. You need to walk with God. Mm -hmm. You need to be a believer. Yes. You need to, come on, keep your hands clean and pure. Yes, yes. But we even talked about that God will even supersede and use a non-believer. Yeah. How much more a believer who loves him, who's seeking after him, who just is pursuing him. Yes. How much more does he want to radically, like, transform your life and use you for the glory of God to bring souls into the kingdom of God? That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Matthew 16, 20 says Let's this. Go. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me, th while you were saying that, I, this is an illustration the Lord wanted me to give you. There's companies out there that send you, uh, friends of ours recommended this to us. They send you um, pre-packaged food, yeah. right? So they give you this beautiful picture, and they say, this is the food that we're going to send you. And then if you take the ingredients we send you, and then you cook them the way that we tell you, you're going to get this picture. So the picture is the Word of God and the examples that we see in the Word of God. But the demonstration is when we take what we see in the Word of God, and then we put into practice, and we begin to work what we see in the Word yeah. of God, that's putting the ingredients in, that's putting it in the frying pan, that's putting it in the boiling pot, that's mixing the ingredients, and then the results that we ultimately get are the results because we follow the recipe in the scripture that we saw in the Gospels, in the book of Acts, in the prophets, in the wisdom writings of the Bible, throughout the scripture. So we don't get the picture without putting to practice what we see in the picture or in the scripture. So it's not enough to just talk about, oh, I want to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, or oh, I desire to be used by God. We actually have to say, okay, let me find biblical examples of God using men and women in the scripture, and then let me do what they did to get the results that they got. So the reality is you'll never see someone healed if you don't pray for a sick person. You'll never see a miracle worked if you don't step out on faith and allow God to supersede the laws of nature. And you will never see the gift of special faith operate if you don't open up yourself to receive faith from the Lord to see a miracle manifested in your life. So you have to do your part. You have to act upon you have to act upon what you have read in the scriptures to then get a manifestation or a result from the Lord. Yeah? Praise God. Okay. We're not supposed to be teaching yet or preaching yet, but just had to get it out because uh, people, people have to move. 
They have to move. Time. It's been time, but yeah. there's an urgency. There is. Amen. So Mark 16, 20 says this, Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by signs that accompanied it. Signs followed them. When they went out to do the business and preach the gospel, it says the Lord confirmed his word. So once again, I can go out and preach and persuade, but what God wants to do is confirm the preaching with accompanying signs or miracles or wonders or gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is the New Testament model of how the gospel is supposed to be preached. It's not just trying to work miracles in the word. It's not just preaching the gospel without miracles. It's preaching the gospel and then letting the signs and wonders and miracles confirm and validate and, and solidify the word that was preached to that audience, that lost group of people, those people, whoever they are. It's always supposed to be preaching and then demonstration, preaching and then divine confirmation through the operating of the gifts of the Spirit. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, this is just the first part of that scripture, but it says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. So signs and wonders, manifestations of the Spirit, they're supposed to accompany you when you preach the gospel. So Pastor Liz, if signs and wonders are not following us when we preach the gospel, what's the problem? There is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is something's not right. <laughs> right. There's absolutely a problem because the scripture is very clear that these signs will accompany those who believe. So you may say, well, I have prayed. Guess what? Keep praying. Yes. Don't give up. That's how, what I would encourage you with. Don't give up. I have prayed, I, and I didn't see a miracle. Guess what? Keep on praying. I know a man of God that he talked about um, so many times he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he kept on praying for the sick. And he just, he was just over. And I'm talking about a big ministry um, that he, he has right now. And um, just listening to his story, I remember him going to a service. It was just a regular service. And mm -hmm. the presence of God was in that place. And he had, he had uh, someone that, he, that was actually operating in that yes. gift. And uh, they laid hands on him. They asked him to preach that night. And I'm telling you, from when he left that space, something shifted yes. in his ministry and in his life. And from that day forward, he operated. That's his story. Mm -hmm. God can do whatever. But I think the one thing that I learned when he was sharing his story with us mm -hmm. and watching that story and listening to him was that he was persistent. He was persistent. He did not quit. After the first time, the hundred times, he was so persistent and was not, was relentless. Yeah. He was so relentless yeah. about praying for the sick, and just saying, God, this is what you said. They shall follow those who believe. So it needs to come to a place where it's manifesting. That's what I believe. I mean, it's great. Continue to preach the gospel. There's nothing wrong with that. You're giving, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're planting seed. God is going to give the increase. Continue to believe God for the healings, for the miracles, all those things that we're talking about, these power gifts and the gifts of the Spirit, but do not quit. I think that's the thing that I would yes, advise and yes, encourage yes. tonight and just admonish you. Just because you didn't see it the first time, the hundredth time, maybe the thousandth time. I don't know if you prayed for a thousand people. I don't know, but you don't stop. Yeah. That's the key. Sometimes God just wants to check how, how much you really are going to believe him yeah. for it. Maybe he's working something in us. That's good. Maybe he wants to teach us something through the process of yes. continuous faith and believing. Maybe he's building mm -hmm. our faith in the process. So I would just say, don't give up. And I would say, don't be satisfied if you don't see the signs. Mm -hmm. Don't settle for it just to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Wow. Come on. But don't be satisfied with not seeing the demonstration. I think that's the key. Let me read this to you. This is one of the scriptures, and you quoted it uh, earlier, but it's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. It says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. But let me just read that mid part. It says, and eagerly, eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible does not give us permission to stop praying. It didn't say follow the way of love and, and, and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit a hundred times, but if you don't reach it by a hundred, then you stop and you give up. It doesn't give a cutoff point of when to stop. 
It says eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. So you keep desiring them, you keep asking, you keep praying, you keep fasting until you see manifestation. So I would even say it is a sin for us to stop seeking if we've not seen manifestation because he's not giving you the okay to stop seeking. He said earnestly desire. Basically, you keep going until you get or you see the manifestation. And the example that I can think of from the scripture is the persistent widow. It says that she was looking for justice for her cause, and she kept pursuing the unjust judge until he responded and gave her what she wanted. And, it, and this man said to him, I don't believe in God, nor do I care about this woman, but so that she won't wear me out, I'm going to give her what she wants. And Jesus used that as an example for the believer. He said, when you pray, don't stop praying until you receive that which you ask for. So you know when you stop praying? You stop praying in one or two cases when the, uh, the Holy Spirit has confirmed and bore witness with you that the prayer has been answered, number one, or when you see with your eyes, the manifestation of what you've asked for. So you eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, and you don't stop asking until you see healings, miracles, and the gift of faith operating in your life. Until then, you keep praying, you keep seeking, you keep fasting, you keep moving. I'm going to tell you this, and I really think this is important because as you were talking, I felt like this is what I need to share. And it's kind of almost jumping into our end of the message, but I need to say this on the front end. I knew, I, someone had prophesied to me back in 1998 that God was going to use me in the area of healing, that gifts of healing would operate in my life, that I would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Pastor Liz, guess how many years it took before I started operating in those gifts? You don't know. It took five and a half years, five and a half years before that prophecy was fulfilled and I started to operate in those gifts. And realistically, it took a full six years until I proficiently and consistently started walking gifts of healing. Six years. And you know what? That has been one of the most prominent parts of our ministry over the last, and that was 17, 18 years ago from that time when it started to happen, that's been one of the most prominent parts of our ministry. So what would have happened if after year four, I would have said, God, I've been praying. I've read books. People prophesied. You hadn't used me in the gifts of healing. I'm going to give up and stop praying. The doors that have opened for us to travel around the country California, New York, Florida, Kansas City, Missouri, these doors have opened because we have operated in gifts of healing. But those doors would not have opened if I had given up and stopped earnestly seeking. So earnestly seeking does not have a timeline attached to it. Hear what I'm saying. Young Christians, young believers, hear what I'm saying. To get rid of this microwave mentality and stop putting a timeline on the Holy Ghost and when you think you should do something. You keep pursuing until he manifests, until you see come to pass, and this is a key for life. You may pray for something for 20 years. You keep praying until you see it happen. You know what? I, other religions, other religions, they get what they get because they know how to persist. How much more should the believers in the body of Christ who serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's told us the future through the book of Revelations. He showed us that we win, but we give up just because a couple of things don't fall in our favor. We need to get our mind right and say, Lord, I'm going to persist until I see the manifestation of the gift or the power of God operating in my life because you want me to win the loss. You have equipped me with the tools to win the loss. Now, I have to maybe persevere in learning how to use the tools, or I need to persevere in the acquisition or the acquiring of the tools. But no matter what the case is, I need to persevere until what I see in the Bible is a reality in my life because that is the promise for every believer. Acts chapter 2 
said that when they started praying in tongues, and this was the promise that was spoken of in the book of Joel, I'm telling you, when we operate in the gifts of the Spirit, when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is a fulfillment of biblical promise. So we don't stop until promise is fulfilled. Yes. You know, I'm just thinking, I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking, and I, I think the prayer is for this generation and the generations past is that if we would literally take um, the pursuit that we have for the for the things that don't matter, that are not eternal, oh. into the spiritual, we would operate very differently. Did you get that? Did that sink in for a minute? If we would pursue the things of God, eternal things, spiritual things, the way we pursue things that are not eternal, day-to-day -day life, the operation of the gifts of the Spirit and the things of God in our life and the demonstration of the power would be different. What are you saying, Pastor Liz? I'm saying we're raised and trained sometimes to pursue money. <laughs> Career. Careers. Education. The American dream. And we are relentless until we attain those things which we were basically our culture has told us this is success. But I'm here to give you a news flash. That's not success in the eyes of God. The big house, the name brand clothes, the vehicles that you may want to drive that are nice, fill in the blank, the education, the job, or the promotions, that is not success in the eyes of God. The big church with the big numbers, right? If you're not bigger than this number, come on, pastors. If you don't have this, then you're not, look, you're not looked upon as successful. Look at the Bible. Tell me what Jesus calls success. Let's read the scriptures and let's identify yeah. what he calls success. A success is someone who's willing to not look out for themselves all the time, but to take care, take care of others, the Samaritan. The one that literally was about the business and going, and he literally stopped to take care of a stranger that he did not know and give finances and time and care to. to and he put his stuff aside to make sure that someone else was cared for. It wasn't all about me. There's nothing wrong. We are educated people. We believe in education. We tell our youngins to go after it, to get it. Come on. But that education coupled, come on, with the fire, knowledge on fire, yeah. that is what's going to count. It's not one or the other. Right. But if we pursue the things of this world the way, right, over and over, if we would pursue the things of God the way yeah. we pursue the things of this world, I believe that we would walk in demonstration and power. Absolutely. I believe that it would be, we, we just need to flip the switch. Yeah. Flip the switch. We need to turn it upside down. We need to put the things that are eternal at the top of our list. Yes. We need to put the things that are spiritual that Jesus says are important. That means something, because guess what? Once you're done in this earth, believers, it's a done, it's a wrap. 80, 90, 100 years, I don't know how long you're going to live, but it's a done deal. But guess what? Eternity is forever. It will never. So what you're doing now is going to matter back then. It's going to matter when we pass. It's going to matter if Jesus comes back. Yeah. And so it's so important that if we just, we got to flip that thing around. We got to put the priorities in its proper place. And we need to dedicate the time yes. to the Lord and dedicate the time studying and dedicate the time to to, to operate in what God's called us to, as opposed to all these other things. Amen. It's important. Amen. It's important. And hear my heart. I'm not saying, what's wrong with a nice home? There's nothing absolutely wrong with a nice home. But if that's all you're living yes. for, that's, that's what I'm talking about. If all you're living for, if all your pursuit are for those things and you put aside the things of God and they're not as important or in more important than the pursuit of things and stuff, then we got we gotta we gotta get a gut check. We gotta check ourselves. We have to get aware of yeah. where we are because yeah. God wants to use you for the kingdom and he has tremendous plans. I promise you, I say this. He didn't create you just to gather stuff on this earth. Hear what I'm saying. He didn't create you to gather 
items on this earth. There's greater purpose, and it's not all about you and I. It's about people that are hurting and dying. And what greater time, what a greater space and time that we are living in yeah. to reach out, man, and see a miracle, a miracle of someone completely yes. transformation in someone's heart and life yes. in, in the stuff that we're dealing with in this time. There's a hurting world right now, and guess what, church? We got the answer. We got the answer. You know, I... I Education is important. Education is not God, and education is not eternal. We, we say, you know, once you have a degree, no one can take that from you. Yeah, that's true, but if we would teach our kids from the time they are babies, you're going to be a man of God. You're going to be a woman of God. You are going to walk in the power of God. You're going to transform the world. If we sowed those seeds in our kids from kids to teenagers to adults, Amen. The world would be radically changed. And we walk, it out. And we we walk, walk it out. But here's the reality. And listen, I'm not hating. My wife, both of us, between the two of us, we have 10 degrees. She has an earned doctorate. I have an earned master's degree, and I'm going to get my doctorate. We believe in education. But hear what I'm saying. Education is not the answer. The Spirit of God, the Word of God, the gifts of the Spirit, they are the answer. That's the answer. If we would begin to teach our children and raise up a generation of men and women of God who know their God, the Bible says they would do great exploits. How many of you young adults, you got a degree and you got student debt and you can't get a job in the field that you went to school for? Because our whole lives we were told that's the answer, that's the answer. And now we have a generation that's saying that's not the answer. What are we going to do now? I got $100,000 of student loan debt, and I can't find a job. But if we would lead them into the cross, we would lead them into the purposes of the kingdom. So much would be different in our world. And the demonstration of the gifts of the Spirit are necessary. Parents, hear me. Begin to preach the kingdom to your kids. Begin to deposit the kingdom in your kids. Begin to impart the kingdom to your kids. Tell them to get education, but don't put education above the kingdom. Put it in its proper place Amen. in alignment with the kingdom. Amen. Lay hand on your kids and prophesy. Prophesy. Speak life over them. Teach them. Teach them and declare the word of the Lord over their lives. Don't wait. You start when they're in, it's in the womb. That's when the right. child is in the womb oh. is when you begin. Yeah. Even before then, you know you want to have children? Your children declare and decree yes. what your child is going to do and who he is going to be and who she's going to be for God. Those are the things as you're praying in the spirit, as you're praying to God and you're seeking God, God will give you a revelation yes. of what he's going to create in you so that you can raise up the amazing responsibility of parents to raise up children, men and women that have a heart for God and the kingdom of God. There's nothing more beautiful than to Come see on. a child who, who loves God, Man. who loves the Lord, who is running after God. There's not mama pushing him. There's not mama saying, you got to do this. No, no, no. There's a sincere hunger. Mom and dad taught them, yes. and then they grabbed the hold of it. They grabbed the hold of their God. It became, he became personal to them, and then all of a sudden, they're running with God. It is absolutely it's amazing. Incredible. Come on, prophesy. Lay hands on your kids. Declare the word of the Lord over your children, parents. The world is looking for your child. That's a man or woman of God. Education, dime a dozen. Millions of people with bachelors. Hundreds of thousands with masters. Tens of thousands with doctorate. It's a dime a dozen. But there's only a handful of true men and women of God in the earth. Yes. That is what the world is looking for. Hear what I'm saying? The world is looking for, the Bible says that all of creation groans and they are waiting for the sons and daughters of God to be manifested. Creation is waiting and saying, where are the men and women of God? We're looking for them. The earth is waiting for the men and women of God to rise up. Listen, some of you want to be a political activist, why don't you flip the script and become a man of God and be a, a Holy Ghost activist? You want to be on the street with a sign, say, these are the signs that will follow me because I'm anointed by God to heal the sick, to cast out devils.
devils to raise the dead. Come on. The world is looking for the sons and daughters of God to be manifested. Your highest measure of creation is to manifest the kingdom of God in the earth. That's the highest measure. That's the highest measure of the world. It says creation is waiting. Creation is like, when are y'all going to show up? Come on. It's time for us to rise up. Yes. It's time for us to rise up. Stop making excuses. Stop waiting for someone else to do the job. I have a saying, Pastor Liz, and it's not original with me, but I said Superman ain't going to show up. I'm not waiting for somebody to do the job that God will call me to do if I'm willing to, by faith, step into my role and do what he's created me to do as a son of the kingdom, manifesting the kingdom in the earth. Amen. Superman ain't coming. Wonder Woman is not going to show up with her lasso. Step into your role, step into your anointing, and do what God has asked you to do. Stop waiting for someone else to do it. It doesn't matter your education. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter. Those things do not matter. God says, who's available? Who's available? Because if I can find someone with a willing spirit, I will raise them up. Poor, ignorant, uneducated, I will raise them up, and I will use them as a sign and a wonder in the earth to let people know that I am real. When are the sons and daughters of God? When are you going to manifest? Creation is groaning, waiting, restless. He's waiting. It's on us. It's not on God. Allow God to use you. This is the hour. This is the time. We just decree and declare. We just right now, we just... In the name yes, of Jesus, name we just, Jesus. those that are watching, this is your hour. This is the greatest hour of the church like never before. Listen, we're not going to spend time complaining. We're not going to spend time groaning about those things. But this is the hour like never before. This is the greatest opportunity in this land like never before. We have been hit with a global pandemic. We've been hit with this, all this uh, just injustice. We have been hit with God, with all of this on our side, all this confusion, but God, this is the hour for the church like never before never to before. rise up and to take its rightful place. We're going to continue to say, it. lay hands on your yeah. own self right now. Even Prophesy. as we, ex we extend our hands and we just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Lord, activate, oh yes. God, activate yes. everything that's dormant. Yes. We speak life and we activate, yes. Father God, every gift yes. that's inside, every believer that is watching Hallelujah. now in the name of Jesus. We say now is the time. Now. This is the hour in Thank the name of you, Jesus Lord. to rise up and to take yes. your rightful place, to declare the things of God, to speak yes. life, to see signs and wonders yes. and miracles. Yes. You are a yes. sign and a wonder. Now allow God to use you yes. and allow others to be signs and wonders to this earth at this time. We just declare activation. Yes. We declare and yes. commission you to yes. go forth yes. in the name of Jesus and yes. allow God to do great exploits to you, through you, in you, through you. Come yes. on. This is the hour. This is the greatest time. This is the greatest time. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie. Yes. Uh, 2020, yeah, this is the worst year. Don't believe the lie. Come There's on. people getting saved. That's There's right. people getting free. Yes. There's people coming to the Lord. Yes. There's countries and masses that are coming to the Lord yes. because of the saints coming out and preaching the good news that God is able to heal. Signs and wonders are happening all over this world, yes. including in the United States, including in in countries where we would not even think or imagine. We're getting the reports. This is the greatest hour for the church. Guess what? When it's the greatest problems, it's the greatest hour yes. for a miracle. We can't see miracles when everything is going great. This is the greatest hour to see miracles. Yes. To see America unified again in the name of Jesus. Yes. That we would come together as real. That God would do something great in our nation. That he would come and unify and heal yes. and, and take racism out in the name of yes. Jesus. That he would uh, reveal and show himself mighty to people. That people will understand yes. and to give them understanding and truth would go forth. Man, this is the greatest hour. We need a miracle. Yes, we we need a miracle. Our nation needs a miracle. Yes. We've been crying out to the Lord. Guess what? You are a miracle 
for this time. You're the miracle. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're the one to yes. go out and speak and declare yes. and see miracles yes. happen before yes. your eyes. Yes. Allow God. We pray that we're encouraging you because this yes. is a time like never before. Yes. I'm telling you, we talk, we, I'm, I'm reiterating this. I need you to hear this. We're, we're complaining. We're complaining, but I'm telling you, it's a setup for miracles. Yes, it is. This time is a setup for miracles. God is able. God is able. Let us lay hands on the sick. Let us see them recover. Let's believe God yeah. for signs, wonders, and miracles, not through just pastors and leaders and ministers, through yourself, a believer that comes to church Sunday after Sunday, that loves God, that reads your Bible, you're faithful, you're committed to God, you want to be used by God, step out, step out, step out of your box, step out. Fear, we bind it, we bind in, the in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. We bind fear in yes, the name of yes, Jesus. Yes. And we release faith in Jesus' name. Authority that you would walk in, in the, the authority that God Jesus. has said you can walk in. In the name of Jesus, yes. we release identity, yes. knowing who you are. Yes. That you would believe what you read and know it's for you, not just for everyone else. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6, Paul said, for this reason I remind you, I like how the King James says, he said to stir up the gift of God that's within you with the laying on of my hands. Yeah. Paul said, I laid hands on you and imparted the gifts. Yeah. He said, it's your responsibility to stir it up. Just like when you got a good pot of soup or a pot of chili, or a pot of gumbo, before you eat it, if it's been sitting dormant on the stove, you stir it up so that you can get all of the seasonings and ingredients to come into conformity before you eat them. God says it's time to stir yourself up. You have been imparted into, you have to now stir yourself up. You have to stir yourself up. It's not God's responsibility to stir you up. It's not our responsibility to stir you up. It's your responsibility to stir yourself up. On the NIV says, or fan into flame. This, uh, not this year, two years ago, we had a cold snap where for one of the few times in the history of Louisiana, it got down to single digits. It was like 9, 10 degrees. And I remember... When that happened, I had some firewood at the house. We have a fireplace. I don't know why we have one. It just makes the house look cute, but we don't need it. But I actually took wood, and I put it on the fire, and I started the fire. But as soon as the flames began to go down, I would stir it up, or I would fan into flame. I would stoke I would stoke the, the logs, and what would happen when I stoked them, when I pressed them, when I would fan them into flame, new fire would break out, and it would rekindle the fire. So it's our responsibility to stoke the fire, to fan in the flame, never or to stir up the gift. And never let it die out. That's right. Never let it die out. That's right. That is a key to keeping a fire going. You got to keep on adding to, yes. adding the kindle, yes. adding the wood. Yes. You cannot let it go out. It goes out. You got to start all over again. Yes. No, 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 no. Keep it stirring. Keep yourself yes. on fire for the Lord. Yes. Keep it going. Don't stop. Ooh. Don't get cold. That's good. Don't retreat. Don't disconnect from the vine. Come on, stay connected, stay connected. Yeah. Amen? You know what I've learned about uh, keeping a fire going yeah. or, or, or using a fireplace? It's easier to keep the fire burning yeah. than it is to restart a new fire. Because literally, yeah. to keep the fire burning, all you have to do is just keep throwing wood on it. Yeah. But to restart the fire, you have to remove all the ashes. You have to clean it out. You have to get some kindling. You have to find something to light it. Yeah. You have to hope that the kindling is enough that it catch the logs on fire. Then you have to stoke it and, and toss them and get. It's so much more work than just throwing wood on the fire. You don't have to do just keep. Look, I just got to keep wood on the fire. Amen. 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 Keep the fire burning. Amen. Praise Jesus. So. 
I'm going to give you quickly these uh, definitions of the gifts of the Spirit, and then we'll give some examples and we'll close out. Yeah. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Awesome. So the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing are manifested for the supernatural healing of the sick and disease without any natural source or means. So, excuse me, with that being said, I'm going to read that one more time, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Liz a question about one of the first times God used you in the area of healing. So, the gifts of healing are defined as this. They are, manifest, they are manifestations of supernatural healing of sickness and disease without any natural source or means. So, Pastor Liz, what was a time, one of the early memories that you had of God using you in gifts of healings? I was thinking about this as we were preparing, and um, one of the times was actually here in uh, House of Prayer Church. Back then, it was called Canal Street Assembly of God, and um, there we were coming out of a fast, I believe, and um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, I remember we had service, and God was moving, and we just felt a stirring. We felt mm -hmm. a stirring just to pray for the sick. And that's what the Bible says, right? Call the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil and then let out, you know, pray for the sick. And so we were literally, come on, following the instructions of the word of God and believing God for healings to happen. And there was an elderly lady, and she was about 78 years old, and she had fallen and fractured her elbow, and she was on a sling. And so she came to church that Sunday with her elbow fractured. She went to the hospital, and that's what they said it was, and she was in so much pain. Yeah. She could not lift her hand. Mm -hmm. She would start wincing every time she lift her hand, uh, her arm, excuse me, to, uh, to believe God. And I remember we, I just saw her, and yeah. literally I was I, on I, the platform. I don't even know. It's coming back to me. There was no one at the altar at that time. We were just praying yeah. and believing, and the Spirit of God was moving. The worship was going, and the Lord said, go now. And he said, go now. I'm going now. I went to her seat, and she was, I don't know, she was probably on the second or front row. I went to her seat, and I just laid hands on her, and I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I'm telling you, that was it. It was a wrap. <laughs> Let me tell you, sister girl, our, our, immediately. Our, immediately, our grandma, we love her to death. We just love this woman of God. She took off the sling, come on, and started raising her hand like this and running up yeah. and down the front of the altar. I'm talking about this like screaming and skipping and moving her arm, which when she first came in, she couldn't even move her arm oh, and she was in all. pain. So that was one of the first times it was miraculous and it just stirred up faith in the body. It stirred up the people of God. Then another miracle happened and then it produced faith yes. for others to step forward and believe God. Sometimes guys, it just takes one. Yes. It just takes one miracle to ignite that fire and people's faith to be to rise up and yeah. to believe God yeah. for themselves and miracles to begin to manifest. So that was one of the early times in ministry, I believe, that uh, God did something amazing. So grateful for it. That was our first year of pastoring when that happened. It was 18 years ago. Yes. Or 17 years ago. Let me say this. What was so awesome? Miracles beget miracles. Healings beget healings. It literally, it, it was that one healing that people saw her in pain, her literally, she had like almost crying because she was in such severe pain, but she was just one of those old faithful saints yeah. that was going to come to church no matter what. Listen, oh man, I, yeah, Look, some of y'all got a, a, a toenail, you clip the tip of your toenail and you out, out of the church for three weeks. This woman was 78 years old and had a broke elbow, and she came to church. But because she had enough faith to come to church, God says, daughter, I'm going to heal you. She didn't even ask someone to pray for her. She just showed up. And once she got healed, then everybody, their faith arose, and they were like, I want to get healed too. If God just healed grandma in front of us instantaneously, then I know God can heal me too. I'm telling you, faith arose yes. that day. It was glorious. It was. Get ready this Sunday. Hello. Do you hey. need a healing in your body? Ooh. Do you need a healing of your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit? This is the time. What are we waiting for? Yeah. Believe God. Let faith arise. Let faith arise in you. Amen. Amen. So uh, the definition of the working of miracles. A miracle or the gift of the working of miracles is a suspension of the usual laws of nature 
and the intervention of supernatural or divine power. So when we talk about the working of miracles, we're talking about God using a human agent, and God will suspend the laws of nature and or he will uh, intervene supernaturally with his divine power. So miracles are powerful. They are, they are just, I don't know, just miracles are awesome. Do you have an example? I know we was talking about miracles, maybe a miracle of provision or some form. Um, what was one of the stories we were talking about? Well, we were early? talking about, well, there's so many, but the one that, I, that comes to mind just like blew my mind away. I mean, I was blown away by the elbow. I mean, just seeing our, our sister in the Lord just be healed. But there was another one that came to my mind. I remember being in the Bronx. I was preaching a conference in the Bronx and um, Bronx, New York. I'm from New York. Uh, now I'm from L.A., Louisiana. All right. But uh, I was in the Bronx preaching a conference and I was I felt the gift of faith. I believed God. We were praying for miracles. And yeah. so we gave a call for those that were sick to come forward and to believe God. And there was a lady who had, uh, it was very evident that one leg was shorter than the other. Mm -hmm. And she came up hobbling. And um, the church, the people knew her at the church. It was our first time yeah. uh, seeing her. We didn't know her. We didn't know anybody in this church except the pastor and his wife. And we were in the service and we said, God is able. We just believe God. We believe the word of the Lord. And we sat her down, and we began to pray for her legs. And lo and behold, her leg started extending and matching the other leg, where they both were even. I'm telling you, that church lost its mind. Yeah. When you know that there's someone that comes in hobbling every single Sunday because there's one leg, there's evidence shorter than the other, and God decides on that day, I'm telling you to just perform a miracle and for others to grab faith and believe that this is the God we serve. He's such a good God. Yeah. He wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us and heal this woman. I'm telling you, she jumped. She worshiped. She thanked the Lord. I mean, it was once again amazing. Yeah. It was glorious. Yes. Yes. It was phenomenal. Yes. We got to see this with our very eyes. I, I, was, I was blown. I was like, God, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You are so good. I believed him for yeah. it because I know that he could do it. I've experienced miracles in my own life. Yes. So I know that yes. God is able. And I'm so thankful. Yes. I'm so thankful that I was in a church. I was raised in a church where I saw miracles. I saw people get healed. I saw people get saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost. I saw the operations of the gifts of the Spirit on Sunday. Not every once in a while. Every Sunday they were operating in the gifts of the yeah, Spirit. Yeah. And it did something in my life. It did something to me as a child. I'm talking about an 11-year-old little girl who's there. You think yeah. that your children are not listening. You think, oh, it's the big deal to bring them to church. It is huge. It is critical. Not only to send them to children's church. Yes, let them go to children's church. Let them understand and read. But to be also in a service yes. with adults seeing God move yeah. and hearing the power of God being preached and demonstrated. And even now during this COVID, we have our children in our, in our adult services, in the, in the sanctuary. Praise God for it. You think, oh, they're just here. No, no, no. God is speaking. God is moving. They're intaking. They're putting in their minds. They are listening. They are receiving what the pastor are preaching, what the pastors are preaching, what the ministers here are preaching. They are receiving. They're seeing people get healed. They're seeing people get touched from God. They're seeing people just cry. They need to see this. They need to see this. I was 11 years old where I got to see and experience miracles. Healings, deliverance, yeah. people being slain in the spirit, people tearing at the, altar, and at the altar. I learned how to tarry as an adult because I tarried as a child. Ooh, that's good. Do you hear what I'm saying? So many of practices in my life, I can absolutely connect to as a child when I saw my pastors, when I saw the people of God. Terry, every Sunday night at those altars, when they lay hands on us, it didn't matter how long, 
Sunday after Sunday, giving a call for those that wanted to speak in tongues and be baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. There was not one Sunday that they didn't give a call. And I remember going Sunday after Sunday, relentless, for four months until that day in April of 1998, where it was my time and it was my turn. And I lifted my hands and one of the deacons, come on, laid hands on me and prayed in the Holy Ghost. And he even spat on me a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I began to pray in tongues. And you know what they did? The fire of God was so, let me tell you, I was lit on fire. Yes. That they took me, they took me, I don't even think I ever shared this, they took me. My pastor was at the altar kneeling and praying in the spirit, and they took my hands and I laid hands on my pastor. As a 24-year-old young adult, and my pastor was set on fire. Do you understand what I'm saying here? This is the hour. Children, I mean, we're, we, we've been kind of, we came off a little bit, but I, I really want to, I really want to, I just need to say this. My disciplined life as a Christian didn't start as an adult. It started as a child. Yeah. Don't ever think that it's a waste to pour into your children or to bring your children to the house of the Lord. Because it's never a waste. God is moving in the children. God is going to raise this generation to do Things that I pray greater than I have ever experienced in my life. If you're, if you're not raising your children in the things of God, then what are they being raised on? Something is discipling. Every child is a disciple of something. They're either going to be a disciple of God or they're going to be a disciple of Disney. Are they going to be a disciple of Nickelodeon? Are they going to be a disciple of MTV? Are they going to be a disciple of Netflix? They're going to be a disciple of some, something is discipling your kid. They're going to be a disciple of Instagram or Snapchat. Somebody is discipling your kid. Why not intention? The Bible says raise a child up in the way they should go. That means that you as the parent, you set the directive. You set the course that your kid it's supposed to travel. You said it. You don't ask them, what does an eight-year-old know about the direction of their life? You, you say this is the way you should go. This is the standard. This is the standard. And what will happen is when they are older, even if they reject the standard, when they are older, those seeds that you have sown, will arise in their spirit and will come to fruition. You know how many times God has given me prophetic words for people who were raised in the church and backslid and turned away from him and were running away from God? And I've come to them. I said, the Holy Ghost is showing me you were raised in the church. God showed you and taught you from the time you were a kid how to walk with him, but you've rejected it. And all of a sudden they cry. Uh, how do you know I was raised in the church? Why? Because those seeds were planted, and now God is sending us to come and put water on the seeds. God is calling us to put water on the seed. It's time for us to to be this, to disciple our kids and raise them up and train them up in the way that they should go. And when they are old, this is a promise from God. They will not depart from it. Come on. Somebody is discipling our kids. Why not disciple them in the ways, the will, and the purposes of God? Praise Jesus. You know, I know parents that are watching, I know we've, we've, we've turned over a corner here, but I just want to stay in this vein. I know... It's difficult. It's difficult to raise children. It's difficult to raise children um, sometimes in the things of God when culture is pulling at them in every other way and when other uh, children at school um, that they're around, whatever, it, are not walking in the ways of the Lord. But I'm telling you, it is worth it. Yes. It is worth it. Yes. It is worth it. I pray the grace of the Lord upon you. Yes. 
to be consistent, to not, to have just a tenacity, a no quit spirit, to be determined that you are going to raise up your child. It is your responsibility from the Lord as a believer. It, this gift, a blessing from the Lord, the children are a blessing from the Lord. It was a gift. These children are gifts to you from the Lord, and it is your responsibility. And God wants you to walk in what he has for, for you to raise in them. And so I just, I just want to tell you, man, I want to encourage you to stick to your guns, to, to ask God for the grace. He's going to give you the grace and the strength and the wherewithal wor to just really push, even when the world is pushing the a complete opposite way. Don't give up. Don't give up. Be consistent. Be faithful and watch what God will do. Yeah. Watch what God will do. Yep. That's, yes. We cannot lose our generation to the world and to the devil. We cannot lose our generation, our seed, to the world and to the devil. It is our responsibility. Come on, parents. It's time for us to do what we got to do. Some of us need to put some food away, go on the fast and start praying and fasting for our kids, crying out for their destiny. And if you have a good kid, even more so you should be fasting and praying. We think it's just because we have rebellious bad kids. No, when we have good kids, God, I'm going to fast and pray so that my child stay on track all the days of their life. It's both. Praise God. Here's the final gift, the gift of special faith or the gift of faith. The gift of special faith is a supernatural manifestation by the Holy Spirit supplying unlimited faith in a specific situation to achieve supernatural results. It is supplying unlimited faith in a specific situation to achieve supernatural results. And then the next one, definition of the gift of faith, it is a gift of the Spirit to the believer in order that they might receive a miracle. The gift of faith can believe in such a way that God honors their word as his own and miraculously bring to pass the desired result. So the working of miracle is we work to receive a miracle. We manifest a miracle. The gift of special faith is we believe to receive a miracle. So finally, in closing, the gift of, uh, of special faith, can you think of an example, a story? Absolutely. Quickly, I, was, I remember being um, in the house of the Lord, and I was on the platform, and I, I was maybe admonishing the people or something, but I literally sensed and felt the Spirit of God come upon me, and I felt the gift of faith be bestowed upon me. And at that moment, I felt like the Lord was saying to me, speak this out and invite those who have this gift of faith even now. I felt like God just came in and just kind of blew in the congregation. And there was just a special gift of faith for the moment to believe God for miracles in whatever way. And I said to the congregation, if right now you have the gift, you feel and sense the gift of faith to pray for those that need a miracle, come up now. And there was a large, there was about seven to 10 people that came up. Yeah. And I just sensed it. I mean, I felt like I can pray for anything at that moment. And God was going to answer because it was tangibly bestowed upon me. I felt the spirit of the Lord. It was different. You know, we talk about we all have a measure of faith. The Bible says that. But I literally felt the tangible presence of God and the gift of faith. My belief for that person that was in front of me to be healed was, I mean, completely to the, to the thousands. Like it was maybe on a normal, maybe it's a hundred, but it just escalated. Yes, it just went yes, to another level. Yes. That's how I knew it was a special gift of faith. Yeah. And so we called up the people and those laid hands, and it was, more, it was awesome. And so we just, People that was something, like absolutely. So it was, it was great. Yeah. It was, and I love that the Lord said, call the people forth that believe it. And I was so grateful to, to sense that I knew that God had came in the room and really bestowed that gift, not only on us, right, me, myself, but on those, the believers, those yeah. that are walking with God yes. to use them because he wants to use his body. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. So. With that being said, what we want to see happen, 
yeah. is that this year in 2020, you make a commitment that you are going to earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit, that you are not going to stop pursuing yes. until you see manifestation yes. and you allow the God of heaven and earth to work through you because he desires to work through you with the preaching of the gospel. The gospel will be preached in all the earth, and then the Bible says Jesus shall return. It's our responsibility. God has equipped us with these supernatural weapons of mass destruction against the kingdom of darkness. We just got to learn how to use them and manifest them. So we, wanna, we want to challenge you that you begin to step out. Stop waiting for an angel to show up in your bedroom and say, hey, this is the time where you need to step out and say, I'm going to pray for people to be healed. Go into your prayer closet, ask God first, yes. and then when you come out of your prayer closet, you go into your day, you look for opportunities. And if they present themselves, so you see someone sick, hey, can I pray for you? Yes. And then you pray. And then you let the gifts of healings manifest. Whatever it is, whatever gift is needed, you let it manifest. So we're challenging you. Yes. Let the Holy Spirit use you in a powerful way. Yeah, I think the last thing as we close, it's a lifestyle. Yes. Praise God for the conference and praise God for the special events that we do and we go outside as a group and we go outside of the four walls. We do that here at House of Prayer. We've done that in Bible college. We were trained to do that. We go to Mardi Gras. We go to the streets. We, we take microphones. We preach the word of God. We see signs and wonders. That's awesome. That's great. But how about every single day of your life? Yeah. God wants it to become a lifestyle, lifestyle that you operate in these amazing gifts. Why don't you start with your neighbor? We want to win the world for Jesus, but God says start in your Jerusalem. Yeah. Your Jerusalem is your neighbor. Your Jerusalem is your city. So I just want to challenge you at that point. What good is it? You're, you're, you're traveling around the world, but you've lost your neighbors. to the. It doesn't make any sense. God is challenging us. Myself, we've been reaching out to our neighbors. We've yeah. been just asking God for wisdom and the gift of discernment, how, what to do. He'll give it to you. He wants to use you. So we challenge you that these gifts will be activated in your yeah. life and you would just go forth and it will become a lifestyle. Amen. Amen. So I open this in prayer. Would you like to close this today? Absolutely. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for those that are tuning in tonight. That Lord, and any time of the day that you may be watching, I thank you, God. We started this, we started this segment with just literally saying, you want to mature the believer. You want us to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You don't want us to be stagnant. You don't want us to be stuck. You don't want us to just live Christianity with mediocre, just being mediocre. You want to use us. You created us for purpose, for God, not just for ourselves, but for others to serve. You were a servant, God. And, Lord, we serve people when we are operating in the gifts of the Spirit. We serve them by being a blessing, by our faith connecting and our faith rising up and our faith leading us to lay hands on them and see them, Father God, recover and healed in the name yeah. of Jesus. God, we're used by God when we believe and we operate in the gift of discernment and we can tell someone, you know, be careful with this. We can warn them yes. because you're speaking to us. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, all this begins with intimacy, with being with the great shepherd, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That, Lord, our lives would, Father God, would be, God, just completely surrendered to you. That we would trust you. That we would have these times alone as Jesus went alone to pray, to seek the Father, so shall we, God. And in that, we will know your voice and hear yes, your voice yes. and know what you're saying for the hour where you can give us the instructions through your voice and also through the word of the God. The word of God is clear that, Lord, signs and wonders will follow those who believe. The word is clear to eagerly seek the gift. Yes. So today, tonight, we activate, Wait. God, every person right yes. now that's watching under the sound of our voice. If it's your desire to operate, just receive it yes, by faith. Right it now. is yours if you're a believer to trust God to step out to see God yes. use you and as a miracle you're a miracle you're a sign and a wonder he saved you he delivered you he set you free he has plans and purpose and destiny for your lives trust him and allow God to use you in this hour like never before you are needed saints you are needed believers in like never before in this hour we need the body of Christ to yes. rise up and to be used 
prophetically. Yes. Where are the voices? Not the ones that are deceived thinking that they're speaking something. No, 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 no. Confirm it with your spiritual yes. leaders. Ask, make sure that no spirit of deception has come upon you, that you will prophesy in yes. truth. Father God, I thank you that you will lay hands on the sick and see them recover, that the, the gift of faith would rise up within you and you will believe God for provision like never before never in the before. name of Jesus. I Be thank you, Lord, Lord, for what you're doing in the midst, Father God, of our lives right yeah. now. So I just pray and decree and declare that the people of God will operate yes. in these gifts, these spiritual gifts that you said are for us. Let us take them. Let us receive them. Let us walk in humility, yes. in humility, operating in these spiritual gifts. We thank you. We trust you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We love you. God bless you. Have an awesome night. Thank you for tuning in to our Wednesday night demonstration of power teaching. We're coming back again next week. And we will begin hitting our last three gifts. So we will discuss that and launch that next time. Those are the vocal gifts. We're coming back with that. So it has been a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Pastor Elizabeth Garcia Smith, you are my favorite guest. You are my number one lady. And I love you so much. And I thank God for you. I cannot do this without you. So I love you. All right. God bless. We'll see you guys again.